Welcome everyone who are here with us today, as well as to our social media members joining us on our Facebook live stream. Also, I'd like to welcome everyone who may be watching this video later from YouTube or our Facebook page, and that you may be touched and blessed by staying tuned in. Don't feel that way? All right, you got that going on. Being frustrated is what I want to address with you today. And I don't know who I'm preaching to out there today, but I know many of us are frustrated all the time. It's our human nature. Our human nature allows us to be frustrated over many, many different things. Something that is frustrating for you may not be frustrating for you. Something that is frustrating for me may be different than frustrating for somebody else. We all have different things that are going to aggravate us and give us that element of frustration. I think that frustration is the way for the devil to play with our minds and distract our thoughts away from God. You think about that. He wants to kind of keep you over here and frustrate you. Lose the vision that God is looking down on you because he wants to keep that shielded from you. Being frustrated is, feel, is a feeling or ex expressing distress or an, and an annoyance. You get annoyed, you're frustrated. It's our inability to change or achieve something. We get frustrated because we can't get something done or do something the way we want to do it. We get frustrated over that. It can cause you to feel sad. It can cause you to be upset. It can cause you to be let down. It can prevent you from progressing, succeeding, or even being fulfilled. It may also cause you to feel defeated or discouraged. That frustration is going to give you that feeling of defeat or discouragement. As I said before, to be human is to experience frustration. But it is not sinful to be frustrated unless you allow that frustration to lead you to sin. It can. With Satan in the mix, it can lead you to sin. I feel very frustrated today when I see all the protests and all the nonsense that's going on in our country today. In my opinion, the media and the political leaders are letting certain groups get away with things while others are held to the letter of the law. There are ministers that are frustrated their congregation can't sing. But we can have people get out there and chant in a large group. Something is wrong with that mix. We as believers need to stand firm with our position. We need to go out there and tell those groups. Make, put an awareness of God. Ask them, do you believe in God? Shout it out. Maybe they might start to think twice about what they're doing or saying. I don't know, but it's very frustrating to, to see all this that's going on. And I'm sure you would agree that it's very frustrating. Put the news on, it's frustrating. We are living in a fallen world, and it shows now more than ever before with this whole COVID thing that is spreading around. There appears to be no escape. It is a real virus, but I think it's just being mushroomed totally out of proportion, which is causing frustration for many, many people. Jesus was sinless. I also believe he experienced frustration. The Apostle Paul also had many frustrations. At one point during Paul's ministry, he wanted to come to see the Th Thessalonians. And he tried over and over, but Satan stopped him. He was prevented from going back. There were reasons why he couldn't get back there. And the word stopped, the Greek translation for that word stop, translates into frustration. We're being stopped, we're being frustrated. Satan We've heard him as the great deceiver. He's also the great frustrator. He causes it by his lies and deceit. 
He enters into our minds. Reviewing the definition of frustration again, it means to hinder, to impede, to thwart. It prevents the achieving of a goal. It is an obstacle. It's an obstacle in our mind. Satan, as I said, is a deceiver and he is a master at blocking the way to God's best. Think about that. He's going to block the way to God's best. God has a plan for us, something better for us. But Satan's always going to put that barrier up and he's going to block that way. He prevents blessings. All through history, this has been his strategy to frustrate the believer. Frustrate him in reaching his objectives. Frustrate him and they give up in despair. In the Old Testament book of Azariah, he was a priest and a scribe, and he records the attempt of God's people to rebuild the temple of God. He tells us of the strategy of Satan in chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. Then the peoples around them set out to discourage the people of Judea and make them afraid to go on building. They hired counselors to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of Cyprus, king of Persia. So there were people that gathered around them to discourage them from continuing that building. Just like there are people today going out there, they're being paid in these, these, these groups to discourage the people, to frustrate the people, to make things all these problems. Frustration is one of those facts of life we have to face. I don't think many people really realize that frustration is something that can be controlled. As Christian believers, when we try to do something that we know is the will of God, we should expect some element of frustration. Why? Because Satan doesn't want us to do the will of God. As you draw closer to God, He's going to throw obstacles at you. He's going to shoot arrows in your back. He's going to make it painful for you because he doesn't want you to have that relationship. He wants to keep you in a sinful nature. does not want us to do the will of God. Now Paul says in Galatians chapter 6 and verses 9 and 10, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those we belong, who belong to the family of believers. Now, you see, Paul knows from experience that doing the Lord's work is not easy. If we decide to go out there and follow whatever the call is and do his work, it's not easy. He says not to be weary, or in other words, not to be frustrated. It's hard work and often will not lead to the results you hope for. We always have to think about what it is that God wanted us to do, not what we wanted to do. So there's always an element of frustration. Satan's going to try and prevent you from doing things. I know one time I was frustrated. I was handing out tracts at a movie theater. People were coming out of the theater. And it was a horrible movie. And I was out there handing out tracts, thinking I could touch some. I had a goal. I wanted to touch as many people as I could. Okay? Devil had a different plan. The security guards came out and said, you guys cannot be out here doing this. That was very frustrating for me. It thwarted what I wanted to do. But maybe God had a different way for me to present that to the people. You know, sometimes our thoughts are not his, his ways of what he wants us to do. So, you know, I overcame that and decided to figure out other ways of touching people's lives. Now, believe it or not, Jesus did experience a lot of frustration. He was always going about doing good. But was it appreciated by everybody around him? I don't think so. The Pharisees treated him like a criminal for loving people and 
Because of that, he ignored their law and healed people. Pharisees didn't like that. It frustrated Jesus that those who were supposed to represent God cared more about rules than about the people. Think about that. They cared more about those rules than they cared about the people. Jesus was frustrated with his own disciples because they were much like the world. They, 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 they were much like the world. They quarreled amongst themselves for status. Who's better? Who does Jesus like better? You know, you know, I'm doing this better than you. He was frustrated over the fact that they quarreled amongst themselves. He was frustrated over Jerusalem. For he loved the people, and he wanted to protect them from the wrath to come. But they would not listen to him, and they did not open their hearts to him. They had hardened hearts. You see, Jesus took on the human form. And when he did that, he experienced the frustrations that we all experience. And the point I'm trying to stress is that frustration is, as I said early on, a fact of life. It's a fact of that human life. It's going to happen. It's not wrong to be frustrated. It's wrong if we don't take it to God and ask Him for His help. It's a, just a reality we need to recognize. It makes a world of difference to know this and to know that Jesus and Paul and all God's people are in this together. Frustration, as I said, is being hindered from reaching goals. It hindering us to reach the will of God. It is a sign, it is not a sign that we're failing God. What we need to recognize is God sees us. It's a sign that Satan is trying to make us fail. We need to have our faith. It's not that we're on the wrong path, it's that Satan wants to knock us off that path. He wants to frustrate us. Every time we advance, he wants to knock us back a peg or two. So if Satan can get you to feel this way, his strategy is effective. And frustration can lead then to failure. But if we recognize that he's in the mix, and we turn it over to God, and say, Satan behind me, in Jesus' name, Satan get behind me, those frustrations will start to lighten up a little bit. We lose our cool because of frustration. It kind of reminds me when I was in high school. Did you lose your cool? <laughs> Ever hear that term, losing your cool? You lost your cool because you were frustrated. We did all kinds of stupid things, meaningless things. We were frustrated over. We did stuff that we shouldn't have done. Don't let life's frustration prevent you from striving for the kingdom of God. That's what Satan wants. Don't let that life frustration strive, you know, forget you from striving for the kingdom of God. In Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I truly think we're all so easily frustrated over the little things. Misplacing your cell phone, losing your car keys, being late for an appointment, forgetting to turn that coffee pot on. All these little things that, you know, just seem to frustrate us. They're so trivial. Mm -hmm. I see there's people out there that can relate to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. However, when the big frustrations come along, it really allows us to see these little frustrations of life and put them into perspective. Because there's Bigger frustrations that can enter into the mix. Bigger frustration can be, I'm frustrated with the fact that I've just been diagnosed with some horrible disease. Mm. And that can be frustrating. Now the other things seem small and trivial. Strive for the kingdom. Put things in perspective. Strive for the kingdom of God. Jesus said, all these things will be given to you as well. Big picture people can handle a little frustration. Whereas little picture people can't get past the little things. But we can be a big picture person if we look at God as being our big picture and helping us get past these little things. There are no specific references in the Bible to little things. 
In the Bible, there are references to only the big things. Think about Moses. God said, leave my people out of Egypt. How am I going to do that? And every time he went to try and get the people released, he met another obstacle. Don't you think he was frustrated by this huge task that God asked him to do? Mm -hmm. A couple times he was ready to just throw the towel and say, you know what, this is not going to work. But he kept his faith and followed God. And he eventually got through all the obstacles that were thrown his way to achieve the goal that God wanted him to do. Form a new nation. Abraham was to go out there and form that new nation. There's a story about helping the widow and the orphan. You've heard the term, take up your cross. Follow me. Get the rich man and all the people in the Bible. You know, Jesus says, follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. How many people couldn't do that? Because they continued to let the frustrations of life hold them back from doing what the will of God was for them. In Acts 26 and 19, Paul says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He had a vision. And he goes, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And he was able to say this with his call because he knew he had the ability to obey with the help of God. Because later in Acts 26, 22, it says, Therefore, having obtaining help from God, to this day I stand. He was given a vision, but he couldn't complete that. He was given, he was, he was called. He couldn't complete that call without having obtained help from God first. He asked for that help, and then he was able to achieve. If our faith is weak or we lose faith, we will not get any help from the Holy Spirit. It's all about that faith. It's all about having the Holy Spirit. It's about understanding your call. He's calling us all individually, but what is it that He wants us to do? Well, you'll find that out by reading the Bible. Eventually, there's going to be a story in there, and you're going to hear that call. You can be 80, 90 years old. All of a sudden, wow, that's what he wants me to do. Kept me around this long in my life because he had a plan for me. This is what he wants me to do. We realize it. So we need to stay in the Word. And we will understand. And when we understand the call, with, through the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll be able to follow that call and obey that call. When we don't follow the call, it might be because of a lack of our own confidence. We might be frustrated with ourselves. Now Satan is getting in the mix again. He's preventing you from having that confidence, having God's help to help you get through it. That's why you need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to guide you every day. Every day, you've heard us preach here before, talk about the Holy Spirit before. Every morning, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to what God is calling you to do. Without the Holy Spirit, we will fail every time. We will become frustrated. We will give up. So invite that Holy Spirit into your life each and every day to guide you throughout your day. Amen. Amen.